Inflation, inflation, inflation. That's all you hear in the news. But they've got a plan. The Inflation Reduction Act coming to a theater near you to squash all the inflation problems. What in Inflation Reduction Act actually reduces inflation? It's a $740 billion plan, 730 pages of things that they're going to do. Green energy initiatives. They're gonna add, I think, 87,000 new IRS agents. Oh, but it's okay, because they're only gonna tax the rich. We're gonna cover that. But what are they really doing to curb inflation? Because the Inflation Reduction Act isn't even about inflation. It's about agendas. It's about what they want to push in getting it through. All they had to do is change the name. It's no longer the Green New Deal, it's now the Inflation Reduction Act. It'd be like walking into a Ferrari dealership and they got a Ford Focus on the thing and the salesman says, that's our brand new Ferrari, isn't it badass? It's a Ford Focus. Oh, no, 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 it's a Ferrari because we call it a Ferrari. Folks, we're being brainwashed because Jerome Powell just went on and said, the U.S is going to feel some pain as we tackle inflation. I'm Chris Noggle. This is What Now, What's Next. So let's dive right into the Inflation Reduction Act, shall we? The Inflation Reduction Act, from what I've seen, and I have not read all 730 pages. I'm sorry, but I ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. But you know who else probably doesn't have time for 730 pages? Everybody that voted it in. Did Joe Biden actually read 730 pages? Maybe he is a master at speed reading. I gotta give him some credit somewhere, so maybe he did read the whole thing. Repeat the line. There's nowhere in the stuff that I've read that really tackles inflation, at least short term. So let's hit the the 800 pound gorilla in the room. Inflation, we're at 8.5, we're coming down a little bit because the Fed, who is in charge of curbing inflation, whether it's creating it or destroying it, because really they hold both superpowers. The Fed is not owned by the US government, it is private. It's a private institution run by the largest bankers in the world. And I truly believe Satan sits on the board, but hey, nobody's keeping track. The Fed is in control of monetary supply. In other words, how much money should we print or take out of the economy? And they they do this in a lot of unique ways, like printing $5.1 trillion when COVID came about, when the pandemic started. That drove the price of everything up. And now that created a massive problem, which resulted in over 9% of inflation, your food, your fuel, your housing, and everything has gone up in price. But that's not what actually happened. You see, nothing really goes up in price, quote unquote. What happens is every time they print a dollar, it steals some value from your current dollar. That's what inflation is. Your money became less valuable. Therefore, because it's less valuable, the cost of goods and and services didn't change, but it takes more dollars to buy the same goods and services. Do you see now? Inflation is really just a, a hidden tax. But let's get back to what they're doing to tame the beast. First and foremost, you all should now understand they're raising interest rates. That's right. Every single time they meet, they're raising rates. Is it 50 basis points? Is it 75 basis points? Well, no one really knows until they do it. But that has affected all of your abilities to buy homes. Millennials that were hot to trot to get a brand new house now are priced out of the market. Not because housing's too expensive, but the cost of that monthly payment doesn't fit their little square box called debt to income ratio. You see, they can't buy the house anymore because the interest rate went up and so did their payment. So what does that mean? Rents are going up. That's right. What is the number one thing that is increasing behind food and energy? Housing. Rents are skyrocketing and it's not even being talked about. But one of the largest expenses in most American households is the cost of housing. It's more than food. It's more than gas. 
Matter of fact, it's about 30% of the person's income and it just went up uh, double digits. And it's going to go up a lot more because is the demand for housing going to go down? Hell no! That's going way up because more and more people that would have normally bought a house can't afford a house now. So what are they going to do? Rent. They're going to rent from a landlord near you and that landlord's sitting there saying, awesome. I got screwed during the pandemic and now I got to make up for lost times. And kudos to them because you know what? I get it. We got screwed as landlords during the pandemic. We had to bite the bullet. So now they're trying to make up for lost times. And you would too if you were a landlord. So rents will continue to go up. The cost of everything will continue to go up. But it's not really the cost, it's your dollars buying less. So Jerome Powell has come out and said the US might feel some pain. Let me dissect that for you. Pain, what is he referring to? Well, you see, this isn't the first time this rodeo has happened. The pain he's referring to is he will, the Fed will destroy the stock market. Oh, you don't believe me. The stock market always goes up in a long period of time. How are you liking those apples when it dropped a thousand? Did that freak you out a little bit? Because it's down about 300 today and we're not even into the thick and thin of it. Oh, it'll be okay until it's not, right? The Fed has done this before. The Fed will thrust us into a recession. Oh, but it's okay. It's for the greater good. We have to curb inflation, which is the more important part than destroying the economy and the markets. It's kind of like one of those like things that kind of goes like this. What's more important? Get inflation down. Oh, by the way, we created it. So we definitely have to get that down to about three. And in doing that, what are we going to do? Destroy the stock market, the bad stock market. We got to bring it to its knees so people don't have money to keep spending money buying cars and boats and yachts and everything else. Because if they keep spending, holy crap, the inflation won't come down. So let's just destroy it all. And they can and will. They'll keep raising interest rates until they bring the beast down. And not only will they keep raising interest rates, they're going to unwind their balance sheet. I talk about this a lot, but just think of a vacuum cleaner being connected to the central banking system and they flip that shit on. All that money that they printed, the 5.1 trillion, they will begin sucking it out. Maybe not all 5.1 trillion, because you got to make sure that the governments and the lobbyists, and you got to make sure that the hedge funds and the banks have adequate money. Oh, by the way, do you know this? Actually, you don't. So I'm going to give you something you don't know. Do you know banks don't have to lend money anymore? Now they will continue because they got to play. They got to play nice. But you realize the Fed doesn't want the banks to lend money anymore. So what the Fed did is the Fed said, hey, listen, guys, you know, all that money you got sitting in surplus, you know, that you'd normally lend out because that's how a bank makes money, right? They you give up control of your money to the bank and the bank makes your money go to work for them because they know how to do that. And they pay they make a spread. They pay you nothing and they charge a lot more than nothing. And they make that spread. Pretty cool business model. Oh, by the way, you should become your own bank and do exactly what a bank does. But let's get back to the regular show here. Banks don't have to lend anymore because the Fed said, Hey guys, we don't want you to lend any money anymore because it's making this inflation thing bad. You know, you give people money for these cars, these boats, these planes, and they just keep buying shit. Price just keeps going up and we're trying to stop that. So how about this? All that money that you normally have to lend to make interest on, just give it to us. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pay you interest on that money. And you don't have to work it and do anything. You don't have to take any risk. We'll take care of it for you. Just don't lend any more money. Shh. Don't tell anybody. That's right. That's exactly what's going on. Matter of fact, Google it and you'll find it. But nobody's talking about it. You'll never hear that. Why is it that if interest rates keep going up and the Fed keeps jacking rates up to get a hold of the beast, why is it that you aren't earning any more money on the money you keep in the bank? You didn't even think about that one, did you, you silly goose? You're not making any more money on your deposits because they don't give a shit if you deposit money anymore. The Fed took over. The Fed gives them all the money. Why would they need your measly little deposits that you're going to make in the bank? Shit, they don't need it because they don't have to lend it out to make money. That changes shit, folks. That changes the dynamic of the entire banking system. And that should wake you up and let you know that now more than ever is when you should start taking back control of your money.
Oh, don't tell them that either. You should be your own bank. You should do the exact same thing that the bank does with your money. And you can do the exact same thing. Shit, all you gotta do is change one thing. It's that simple. All right, let's get back into Jerome Powell saying there's gonna be some pain. If the markets go down 30, 40, 50, 60%, from where they're at now. Oh, you don't think that can happen? I'll bet you it does. I put a hundred bucks on the line right now to anybody that gets it right. The markets are gonna go down a lot. If you even know how to read a simple stock chart like us, let's just say this index that everybody talks about nowadays. Oh, I'm investing in the S&P 500. I invest in index funds. Do you even know what an index is? Oh, I'm sorry, you don't. But everybody told you that that's what you should do. Your advisor said, oh, let's just invest in these indexes. They're the best thing. How about those IULs? Best thing ever. Yeah, how about we put our money into something that's gonna make us nothing and lose money when the markets are down. But it's okay because we're buying low. In an IUL, you're not buying low. You're not buying anything. The insurance company controls it. You're just participating. It's like, you think you're the star player? Nope, you're just participating. That's all you're doing. And a lot of the stuff that you think you are actually doing the right things, you're doing the complete opposite thing that the wealthy do. You see, the wealthy are playing a different games. You know how I know this? Because I travel around and speak for events. I just got done speaking at an event. 140 individuals were at this event. Not one of them makes less than a million dollars a year. Oh, they're the bad guys for some of you watching this, right? You think they're the bad guys. You know what they're doing? They're creating jobs. They're building businesses that are scaling and, and doing all sorts of things that this country needs. And yes, they're making a lot of money. And you know what they're also doing? The exact opposite that you are. They're not putting money in the stock market. Matter of fact, they're like, oh no. They're buying assets, tangible assets. They're doing the same things that BlackRock and Blackstone have been doing, and that is buying your neighbor's house. That's right. Middle America very soon won't be middle America. There will be the wealthy and there will be the low income class, just like most other countries, because they're trying to destroy the middle class. And where does the middle class's wealth come from? Is it their bank accounts? Is it their 401ks that they're not even in control of? Oh no. It's the equity in their house. The average household for a middle-class American, the, ma the magic number that makes up their net worth is their home. So how do we take over, and I'm talking when I say we, the government and the Fed, how do we get a hold of the middle class? Those are the, the bad guys, but we're gonna tell them that they're the good guys, but they're the ones that have the power in this country because they're the masses. So how do we get a handle on them? Well, let's just get all these big hedge funds, BlackRock, Blackstone, there's lots of them. And let's give them a little bit of help, a little federal funding, you know, some of that little sh sh money under the thing, sh don't tell anybody. And then let them go out and buy all the houses. Let them just keep paying whatever price people want for the house. We'll keep driving the price of housing up so the average new middle class American can't afford a house because then they're gonna have to rent. And guess who's gonna own all the rentals? That's right, the hedge funds. And guess where the hedge funds are getting all their money? That's right, the Fed. And then once the middle class household is owned by the hedge funds, now they have control because then nobody can afford housing because they can control the price of housing. I mean, back in the day, we used to call this monopoly. You ever play that game? Yeah, that's what they called it. But they're, they're playing a big game of monopoly. And the funniest part is, is the average person actually thinks housing's going up because their neighbors are buying houses and they're paying more. They're paying more because hedge funds can pay way over ask for houses, and they are to the tune of tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of homes. Complete neighborhoods. And you know who all those, those builders are building for? Well, not all of them, but you know, a lot of these new apartment complexes popping up everywhere. I was just in Salt Lake City. And when you get up on the hills and you look out, everything's new construction. Who's funding all that? Who are those new construction homes for? I bet you a lot of them aren't for your neighbor. You know who they're for? Hedge funds. You know who's funding them? Hedge funds. You know who's in control of them? Hedge funds. Why? Control, control, control. If housing is 30% of the average American's net income, how do you take over that? You make it so the average American can't own a home and has to rent. And who are they gonna rent from? The man. That's right, folks. 
The other thing I really want to talk about is what we started with, the Inflation Reduction Act. I know I got off topic a little bit, but all of this stuff feeds into one central message. We are so fixated right now on inflation. It is the biggest problem in the media. It's the biggest problem in the news. It's what you are all thinking about. Matter of fact, thinking about it so much that you're making irrational, emotional investment decisions with your money because you think you got you to get ahead of inflation. You got to hedge inflation. You got to beat inflation. Now, slow down and pay very close attention. What I'd like you to do is grab a pen and grab some paper because you're going to want to take some notes right here. Inflation is a temporary problem. But why is it that the government, the media, and your financial advisors seem to want to tackle a short-term problem, inflation, with a long-term solution? That's what we're doing. And not only is your advisor and everybody else suggesting long-term solutions for a short-term problem, massive mistake, just so you know. You know who else is? The government. Let's print $740 billion. Let's hire 87,000 new IRS agents so they can go out and tax the shit out of, oh no, not the, not the middle class. No, we're only gonna tax corporations and the wealthy. Folks, I don't know how to bring this to you in a nice way, so you know what, I don't care if you're my friend. You can hate me for what I'm gonna say. You don't know shit about how the wealthy handle taxes because you know what? The wealthy don't pay taxes like you and I. Do you know why? Because they read the tax code. They know what the tax code says. Matter of fact, they didn't read it. They got the best of the best because they can afford the best of the best. They read the tax code. Who am I talking about? Well, let's see, the Clintons, the Bidens, the Buffets, the Gates. Yeah. You know all those wealthy families foundations that you hear about? Oh, is there such a good thing? They put all their money in these foundations. Oh my gosh, Warren Buffett back a while ago did such a great thing. He donated his entire fortune to the Gates Foundation. Okay, great. He got a full tax deduction for that. So he didn't pay any taxes on any of that money. He did such a good thing. And then the Gates Foundation, what did they do? Well, the Gates Foundation, run by Bill Gates, who has the sole discretion to invest the money in the foundation, no wrong with that. He then says, well, and you can look this up, folks, Google it. The Gates Foundation, okay, look at their portfolio. The majority, over 50% of the, that portfolio is invested in a little known fund called Berkshire Hathaway. That's right. Warren Buffett donates his entire fortune to the Gates Foundation. Oh, what a great man. Then the Gates Foundation, Bill Gates, takes that entire fortune that was just donated and invests it in this company called Berkshire Hathaway, which is controlled and owned by who? Warren Buffett. Whoa. Pretty smart shit, huh? Gave up the whole thing. Got a tax deduction on all of it. Went into a foundation. Great, guys. Then all the money landed back in the same damn place it came from in the beginning in the same control that it was in before. Listen, I like Warren Buffett, but you understand what's going on here? I hope that at least enlightens you a little bit. The tax code is built for the wealthy. So when you say you're gonna tax the wealthy, I call your bluff. The wealthy aren't gonna pay taxes because they know how the tax code works and they know what to do to not pay taxes. And everything they do is fully legal. There is nothing wrong with it. They are not breaking laws. They are not breaking rules. And by all intents and purposes, they are doing what most would consider a greater good. And in doing that, you say you're going to tax the wealthy. I don't know any wealthy individuals that don't understand the tax code, at least to a higher level than the average American. Therefore, they know how to get bonus depreciations. They know that if they buy a jet, they got a full tax write-off on that plane. They know what to do with their money so that they don't have to pay taxes. So really, who are these 87,000 IRS agents coming after? Are they going after the wealthy who have teams of accountants, teams of bookkeepers, teams of lawyers? That's a hard fight, isn't it? Nope, they're going after you. They're going after you because you don't have teams of accountants. You don't have teams of attorneys and you can't fight them. Oh, and by the way, I guess now they're armed. I never knew that IRS agents actually packed heat, but now I guess that's a dangerous occupation. So we got to make sure they got a nine mil on the corner, you know, just in case somebody doesn't want to pay that extra $500 in taxes. We're going to pay it now. I'm just kidding, folks, but am I? How far off from the truth is that? 
They tell people what they want to hear. They tell them what they want to hear because they want votes. Hey, why don't we just talk a little bit about this college thing, right? College student loans. I grew up with student loans. Everybody I know had student loans and they paid them like good American citizens. That's right. I got my education. I got a job. I paid that loan. Hmm. Seems pretty logical. But now, well, I mean, hey, ratings are down pretty pretty far for this, uh, this president here. And I think we do have an election coming up. And uh, hey, what would be a really good way to guarantee some votes. Yeah, let's wipe out $10,000 in student loans because that's a lot of people. And if we did that, I bet you they might like us a little bit. Maybe we'd get their vote. I'm not saying that that's bad or good, okay? I'm not making an opinion on whether or not them paying off $10,000 in student loans for the average person is bad. Actually, it's probably a good thing because it gives them 10 grand to go out there and take care of their family. But I'm just saying, like looking behind the curtain a little bit, Damn, man, that's a pretty smart thing to do if you want to get some votes from some people. I'm just saying it makes logical sense. Let's take a motion out. If I was a politician and that was posed to me, I'd be like, you're getting a raise, man. That's going to get us some serious votes. And then all we need to do is print some money, get a hold of the Fed and just say, hey, we're going to print a little bit of money here. Uh, we're going to call it the Inflation Reduction Act but then we're just going to do this. But let's get into another thing that's gonna really freaking hurt. We all know there's a war going on in Russia and Ukraine. It's, it's pretty sad what's happening over there. But you know what else is happening? And it's not on Russia or Ukraine's soil. It's in Europe. Europe's a pretty cold place. I live in Buffalo, New York, and it's cold here. But over in Europe and Germany and lots of places, they got a lot of people that live over there, just so you know. And in the winter, it gets really freaking cold. I've been there when I was a pro snowboarder. And when it gets really cold, people like to heat their homes. But you see, we got this little problem now because Russia controls a lot of the gas that goes to Europe to make sure that these poor people can heat their homes in the middle of winter. So what happens when there's just not enough gas to heat all the homes? The government has to make hard decisions, and I'm talking about the European governments. They have to then tell people, well, you can't run this during this time. You can't use gas. They have to shut factories down during certain times because if there's only so much gas that they can get, they're going to have to control that. Folks, we've seen this before in history. It's sick. It's really sad. We're going to see that. We're going to see that soon when winter hits. We're going to see families freezing. We're going to see families freezing because of this war, the lack of, of gas, and because partially Europe has been late to get on the game of finding different sources for gas because that's the only thing. They weren't in control of something they should have been in control of. But let's talk about something else that really hits home here in the United States. Because I know most of you, you know, you're looking at Europe and it's important, but hey, we live in the US, so let's talk US. Let's talk about cars. I love freaking cars, don't you? Let's talk about the future of cars. Let's talk about electric EV cars. See them everywhere. Every company out there is producing EV cars. I don't care if it's Ferrari, Maserati, Mercedes. GM said their entire fleet's going to only be EVs, electric vehicles. Now, that's all great, right? There's a lot of good things about EV. It reduces emissions. It helps save the planet and all that. But let's talk about the trade-off. Now, I just told you about gas in Europe. Let's talk about electric in the U.S. Has anyone done any studies about the electrical grid here in the U.S.? Because as far as I know, and actually, I know this to be fact. In California, during the heat of summer, when everybody's pumping their AC, that uses a lot of electric. And a lot of times, they have blackouts. And a lot of times, they say you can't use your AC at certain points of time. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't charge your electric vehicle during certain times. Now, that may or may not have happened already. Just saying, I did read something about that. But... What happens when everybody, for the most part everybody, drives an electric vehicle? And when everybody on the East Coast plugs their electric vehicle in about the same time to charge that thing overnight, what happens to the electrical grid? Can it sustain that? Well, what if it can't? Are we going to be in a very similar situation than, that Europe's in? where they don't have enough gas to heat their homes. Well, what if when we don't have enough electric, they just tell you, well, you can't charge your car anymore? How are you going to get where you want to be? To me, that is a great way to control a large group of people. 
Because if you can tell them they can't charge their EV car, you can control where they go, when they go there, how they do things. You see, I drive a bi-turbo V8. I get about a hefty eight miles per gallon, and I am happy to say that. I'm not trying to be an asshole. But I love when I go out there and I put the key in, I turn that son of a bitch on, it starts. I didn't have to charge it. I didn't have to worry about electric grids. You might say, oh, what happens when gas is there? You ever watch Mad Max? That dude had a little pipe that he put into like the wells and he just sucked gas out. You see, gas is a natural resource. A natural resource that there's lots of. I'm not saying it's perfect, but if I gotta weigh it out, I'm going with gas because I watched Mad Max and that just seemed like that movie in so many ways seemed to resemble a lot of the things happening today and that scares the shit out of me. Sometimes we have to look at the initiatives. We have to look at the agendas and we have to wonder, is there a bigger story that we're not hearing here? Because I know it to be fact that the United States of America right now does not have the energy or the power grids to sustain everybody driving electric vehicles. Not that everybody ever will, but someday they will. I'm gonna wrap with this inflation. We're talking about inflation, which is a short-term short problem that is being handled with long-term solutions. The government's Inflation Reduction Act does nothing to solve the short-term inflation goal. Matter of fact, everything they do is a 10-year plan. Folks, we're not going to have an inflation problem in 10 years. It might be the complete opposite. So why is it that we're all buying into this nonsense that the Inflation Reduction Act reduces and will help inflation today. Read the articles. Everything in the articles, in the points that are in that bill, stay, state that it will help in the long run. 10 years. Right here. They're looking at this hiring of all these IRS agents, about $124 billion tax savings. Over how long? 10 years. They're saying, this is, this is the final thing I'm gonna say and we're, we're done because this is, this is the one that really gets me. I want you to understand they printed 5.1 trillion, okay? Then they just printed, or they will, for this act, print another 740 billion. Now, 124 billion of that's gonna come back out, of, back out of tax savings over 10 years. We will have a different administration, maybe even two or three different administrations in from there to there. So is that really a factual thing? Let's just call it the truth. Everything that that bill does solves future problems later on. Most Americans I know want problems taken care of today, not 10 years down the line. But it sure does make a lot of sense when you print a lot of extra money to get things that you want in your time that you have done. All of this money printing builds on the deficit, but one of the big things this Inflation Reduction Act says is they're gonna reduce the US deficit. How? How can you reduce it when you subscribe to modern monetary theory economics where every single thing results in printing more money, which means creating more debt? It's time for you to take back control of your money. It's time for you to start looking at being your own bank, which you can watch videos, which I'll give you one in a second, but it is time for you to start using simple logic and leave the emotion out of it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of What Now? what's next and if you liked this one check this video out because this video teaches you exactly how you can mimic the banks and be your own bank we'll see you the next time